Hey what's up? In today's video we'll be looking at uh, various other ways to create OpenShift apps especially from Docker images, Docker files and uh, a new build uh, tool called Source to Image. We'll be going through each of these uh, in addition to what we saw in the previous video. Uh, we saw that we could create resources and uh, we could make YAML files out of these resources and then uh, apply them on the OpenShift cluster. Today we'll be looking at other methods as well. Uh, the YAML method is not uh, uh, used in production or in a common usage as much as uh, uh, the command line option called new app, OC new app. Uh, we'll create a project uh, for this purpose. New app takes a lot of uh, input options. Uh, it takes in uh, the location of your source code, uh, the type of build strategy you want to deploy your app, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, we'll start with a very simple uh, app deployment. The one we deployed in the previous video where uh, we built an Apache image with a custom index.html file. We'll recreate the same app using the new app uh, command line option. I specify the Docker image source, which is there in external registry. We've still not created an image stream for this image. And I give a new label called the new app. The method equals new app. This is completely optional. You can skip this step, but I just uh, give this to track all the resources which are created in each run. So let's give that. You can see that uh, OpenShift finds that there is a Docker image with the same name and then it creates an image stream and then tags it with the same tag and builds a new app. Uh, we have not exposed the service yet. Let's do that. Uh, let's see what resources are created. Uh, like I mentioned uh, in the previous command, if you give a label, it's easier to track. So you can filter all the resources by using this label name. So there's a pod created, and there's a replication controller, and then a service, and then a deployment config. Uh, the default um, uh, configuration for a deployment config and a replica set is one, so that's what we have here. And we have an image stream which gets created when I supply the Docker image over here. And then a route got created because I exposed the service here. Let's go and hit this. Okay, all good. So now what we want to do is we want to bump up the number of uh, uh, replicas which uh, we want to deploy for this app. So let's do that using a command called OC patch. I give the deployment config name. This is the name which got created. You can see that here. And um, I give the patch. The patch is the uh, uh, path for the configuration piece which you want to change. If you do a describe of this or a YAML dump of this, you'll get a spec and under that spec you'll have a key called replicas and the value is 1. So we are uh, updating it to 2. Once we do this, you can see that the number of pods increase to 2. So you can see that there are two pods now as opposed to only one pod before and then the desired uh, number of uh, replicas is two and the replication controller creates two replicas as mentioned here. So this is uh, almost the same as what we saw previously except that instead of uh, giving everything in YAML files we just did it through the new app which creates all the required resources for us in that sequence. Now. Um, Still no change in the deployment because we have not deployed anything new. So that's a quick overview of what how new app works. We'll try to 
deploy a more complex scenario wherein um, you have a an app and then a docker file as well now uh, um, this is a very uh, concorded example wherein you specify the image and then you bake in uh, the source code into that image and you do everything and you just supply the image to OpenShift. So that's not a lot of value addition. Let's go one step further and then just give OpenShift the source code and the Docker file. For this, I have a app which is already written. It's written in Golang. It's a very simple um, HTTP request response server. I have a Docker file which builds this and then adds the executable. You can see that I run it as user 1001. Otherwise, OpenShift is not going to run my pod for me if I'm the root user. And then I run the process over here. Let's try to create a new app from this Git repo. Because it's a public repo, I don't need any other credentials for OpenShift. So the syntax for this is new app followed by the repo URL. Um, I didn't give a SSH based URL here because uh, it's a public repo. If you're giving a private one, you need to specify credentials here, which we'll see in a later video. And then the name of the app, which I'm going to create is mentioned here. So what this command does is it picks up the docker file at the top level directory and then sees that it, there is an image already there and then it creates an intermediate image from this and then creates an image stream version of the same. You can see that it prints a warning here saying that uh, it is running as a root user. So we have overridden that behavior uh, below here in the docker file. So we run it as a non-root user. So once you have uh, done this, it's going to deploy a new app. Let's expose that. You can see that it says hello OpenShift because that's what uh, I have written in the app. I just print hello OpenShift in H1 tags. Now, um, if you have uh, watched the previous videos, the resources we created for this are almost the same as uh, other apps, but there is one new resource created called the build config. Uh, so this build config is a resource which specifies how your app is built. So this is called even before the deployment config. It says that, um, Whenever there is a change detected in this repo, you trigger a new build and then um, impose that on top of the image which you created from the Docker file over here and then create a new deployment and then rest of the workflow is the same. You create a deployment and then deployment creates a replication controller and replication controller creates the pods and then you expose the service as a route. So let's briefly describe what the build config is. So you see that uh, the strategy is Docker because it saw a Docker file at the top level directory and it's going to build from this URL. And this is the image stream tag which it's going to use and so on. Let's try to trigger a new build manually. Before that, we'll see how many builds have happened so far. There's only one build which happened when I created this app. Let's trigger one more build after changing the source code. Let me change it inline. So now I've made a small change. Let me trigger a build. The way you trigger a build is OC. 
start build go hyphen app the name of the build config no you'll have one more build which is running right now app 2 so it destroys and recreates all the containers because it's a new build which is getting triggered let's try to refresh this so you can see that uh, the build triggered uh, deployment config automatically and everything else followed suit so this is one more way which is an improvement of, on top of uh, new app to trigger app builds you can also set up a webhook which we saw here when we did a describe of the build config you can give this webhook which is very specific to github in the github uh, repository settings and when you do a push automatically it's going to send uh, a trigger to this url i'll mention in a future video how to create a webhook for uh, an app so this is one way to build a new app in openshift there is one more way which is my uh, personal favorite it's called the source to image the great thing about source to image is the team or the developer in question need not have any context about openshift containers docker files or images of any sort openshift is going to figure everything out for you like magic so the way it works is when you create a new source image type build that's the default build by the way so what happens is openshift opens your uh, source code and then tries to infer what is the stack behind your code base whether it is python or node.js or rails or whatever and then once it figures out it's going to pull a relevant base image from its registry so you can see that it ships with a set of uh, base images already they're all in the openshift namespace so you can see that um, almost all the popular stacks and apps like nginx mysql they all have a builder image and they are all latest like for python you have got uh, 3. Dot, i think until 3.6 and it's all it's all uh, battle tested uh, base images which try to infer your source code what language it is and then map it with this and uh, what happens is once they find out what base image they have to use they inject the source code into this base image and create an intermediate image and then trigger a new build now uh, let's see this in action real quick again for this demo of a source image i have created a custom python repo it runs a web framework called flask it's got a set of uh, dependencies in requirements.txt that's the conventional way how you store requirements in python and then an app.py again this is a very uh, specific convention which you follow for uh, source image builds you should have a file by name app.py or some other similar name so once openshift opens this uh, directory and then sees an app.py it then figures that okay python is the base image which i should use and then it injects this source code into the python base image and then creates an intermediate image let's try to create a python app using this setup again these base images they come when you install a new openshift cluster you can even create your own base images which i will demonstrate in a future video so you can see that uh, it found out that python is the relevant base image for this and then 3.6 is the latest tag and uh, it's creating an image stream for this after injecting the source code of your uh, git repo let's expose this and then see how it runs again uh, this creates all the elements similar to the previous golang app like your build config your uh, deployment config replication controls and so on and so forth
again not very useful it just prints hello world but uh, this is just to demonstrate uh, how uh, productive and uh, efficient uh, source stream images you can see that uh, i don't have any docker file or any open shift specific context in my code base at all this is the easiest way to get started with open shift if you want to containerize your application and then put it on a kubernetes workflow so we'll be um, doing uh, the next video on how to uh, create a custom source to image uh, container and deploying your app all then stay tuned bye bye